This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. This episode of SketchUp a 3D Toolbox is brought to you by 3D Connection, makers of the Space Navigator. To learn more about them, visit their website at www.3dconnection.com. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of SketchUp, a 3D Toolbox. I'm Cameron Harris, and this is episode number 33. Now, today, I'm going to talk to you about a feature in SketchUp that I call Sunlight Simulation. Basically, what that means is that you can tell SketchUp where your model is located, what time of day it is, and what time of year it is, and it will actually simulate the shadows that your model would cast if it was out in the sun. This is really cool for figuring out uh, where good placements for windows would be, or good for landscaping, and it really gives your model a very cool look. Let me show you how you can do it. So here's the small house project that we've been working on for the last several episodes. Uh, if you want to experiment with uh, the uh, sunlight simulation with this exact same model, you can download it uh, on our website. Just go to the show notes for this episode of SketchUp a 3D Toolbox. You can download it from there and uh, play around with it. Uh, now, now, here's what's kind of interesting about sunlight simulation. If you think about it, if you're simulating the sun, you kind of need to do two things. The one thing you need to do is obviously, you know, turn on the sunlight simulation in SketchUp, turn on the shading, and then, you know, that'll simulate it. But you also need to give it some more information because the way, the angle of the sun and the way the shadows are going to be cast depends on three major things. Uh, the first two are the time of day, because the sun moves across the sky, depending on what time of day it is, as well as uh, what time, what day of the year it is. So what time of year, so um, whether it's in the fall or spring or summer or winter, you can even dial it into a specific date and the sun's angle will be slightly different. So those things you can all set up in SketchUp. But there's a third factor that you need to think about and that is where you are in the world. So where, well, where your model is in the world specifically. For example, if I were to say that this model is in San Francisco, I would get a very different uh, sunlight simulation than if I said this model was in New York. Now, let me show you something that's kind of interesting. The first thing you need to do is give your model information about where it is in the world. And uh, this is actually a, a pretty uh, neat little feature. If you go up to uh, the window menu up here, you see that down here you have uh, this uh, thing right here that says Model Info. Or you can also do uh, Command-Shift-I or Control-Shift-I if you're on a PC. But for now, I'm just going to click on Model Info. And here is this uh, model information window. And you can see we've got all this stuff on the sides here. We've got animation, components, credits, dimensions. Um, I'm going to talk about all this stuff in future episodes, but for now the only thing that we care about is this one right here that says location. And you can see that right here we have you know things like georeferencing and solar orientation. We don't really worry, need to worry about that right now. All we're worried about for this uh, for this uh, episode is the geographic location section right here. You can see that under country it's set to USA, so we can choose whatever country we want here. And these are some built-in locations. So these like here's Boulder, Colorado. We also have um, things like Alameda, California, or uh, Bay Shore, New York. You know, all kinds of different places uh, that you can choose. So you could go that way if you if you don't want to get too detailed about your model, or if you know you're in a you want to put it in a major city, that'll work just fine. You can also set a custom location by clicking this button here. Um, keep in mind that this is only for those of you who uh, happen to know the exact latitude and longitude of uh, your of your of your location. This is a little bit advanced. I never touched this. So these are okay ways to set up your uh, location, but there's a much easier and much more accurate way to give your model uh, location information. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. You actually don't do it within SketchUp. This is actually going to use another application, also from Google and also free, called Google Earth. You may have heard of Google Earth before. Let me go ahead and pop it open for you here. So here we are, this is Google Earth. And um, as you can see, it literally is the entire Earth made up of satellite imagery. You can also get things like uh, 
traffic information, weather information. Um, it's kind of like a desktop version of Google Maps, if you've ever used that. It even has 3D buildings in it, which is pretty cool. Um, but in this case, all I'm worried about is finding a location in it. Uh, and by the way, if you don't have Google Earth, I'm going to I'm gonna have a link in the show notes for this episode where you can download it. Don't worry, it's completely free, and it's actually a pretty fun uh, application to just play around in. Now, for now, I'm just going to go up to the search box right here, and I want my house to be in San Francisco. So I'm going to choose San Francisco. And it automatically zooms into that city. There we go. So here is San Francisco. Now, uh, this isn't you know very detailed. Um, you know, I could just use this, uh, but let's say I wanted a specific lot. I could go ahead and type in a specific address. Uh, for now, though, I'm actually just gonna kind of zoom in manually. And I'm just gonna pick a random lot around here. So, like, let's say, let's say I wanted to have my uh, my house be on this lot. I don't know where this is, I don't know what this is, but let's just you know use this as a sample location. You can put yours wherever you want. You could put it, you know, put it where your house is if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. But you just need some very pretty detailed information. And you're just gonna kind of use the Google Earth navigation tools to kind of orient yourself so that you're getting a kind of a bird's eye view. You're looking straight down on the lot. Frame the lot as best you can in your window. Don't like be too zoomed out and see other lots and stuff. Kind of zoom in right at that particular location. In fact, you could even get way more detail and go on, on a specific building. So like, let's say this is the exact address that you want to put your house on. This could be really useful if you're uh, designing a house to, that would actually be built on a specific plot of land. Um, but for now, I'm just going to use this. Now, we're going to leave Google Earth at this point. Keep it open. Don't quit Google Earth or anything like that. But we're going to navigate back to SketchUp. Have SketchUp on top of Google Earth. And because SketchUp and Google Earth are both Google products, they're actually integrated with each other. So if you have both of them installed on your computer, you can go up to, in SketchUp, you can go up to the Tools menu. And you have a section of to, uh, in the Tools menu that says Google Earth. And you can see you've got three options. You've got Get Current View, Toggle Terrain, which is grayed out, and Place Model. If you choose Get Current View, it will get the current, you know, whatever Google Earth is currently seeing, it imports that exact image and places it in your model. And you can see that's pretty cool. And it actually puts it uh, to scale, I believe, as well. So pretty cool. It's got a little bit of a watermark down here, but that's fine. Uh, now, you might... Well, you might be wondering, why would you uh, want to import this from Google Earth? Well, I'm going to go ahead and quit out of Google Earth real quick. You can see that it's imported. This um, terrain is what they call it. Um, but you can see you've imported this particular section of Google Earth. And what's really cool about this is it's not a couple things. First of all, if you wanted to, let's say you wanted to model your house, that you could do this as the first step in modeling your house or a specific building. You could import the terrain, any terrain in the world, from Google Earth, and then you have basically a very nice um, canvas to start with. And uh, what you could even do is you could even, just to start out with, you could kind of trace around the outline of a building if you wanted to. And there's actually some pretty cool stuff you can do with Google Earth uh, that we're going to talk about in future episodes because it does get pretty advanced. But for now, all we really care about is the fact that when you import terrain from Google Earth, it not only imports this image here, but if we look, uh, go into our tool, uh, our, sorry, our window model info, you can see geo-referencing is now checked. That means that it's basically linked with Google Earth, and it says country and location, that's not available, but you can see it's set a custom latitude and longitude and a solar orientation. Basically, it has imported the exact location from Google Earth. So this house now basically exists right here as far as the model is concerned. And this is perfect for our sunlight simulation. So at this point, we actually don't need this you know, photo terrain thing right here. So we can go ahead and select it and delete it. But you'll notice if you hit your delete key, nothing is going to happen. You'll also notice that uh, your image around here, uh, instead of the normal blue outline you're used to, you have a red outline. Well, that's because when you import terrain from Google Earth, it comes in uh, in what's called locked. 
And when, when an object is locked, you can even do this to your own objects if you want them to not be modified, but basically when an object is locked, you can't do anything to it. You can't move it, you can't edit it, you can't delete it. That can be really handy if you've finished a particular part of your model and you don't want to you know, accidentally edit anything in it. But in this case, we actually do want to get rid of this. So the way you can do that is just right click anywhere on the object and you can see that it has, you know, you can see even all these other ob uh, options are also uh, uh, grayed out because it's locked. But you can see that one is still available and that's unlock. And if you choose unlock, you can see it turns blue and now we can do whatever we want. If you want to lock it again, just choose, just right click on it and choose lock. And you can see it goes back to its locked mode. But for now, I'm going to unlock it and hit the delete key and that gets rid of it. But if you go up to your model info, you can see the geolocation still remains. So now we have uh, our geolocation and we're ready to do our sunlight, sunlight simulation because it knows, okay, you are here in relationship to the sun. So now we know what kind of angles to give you. And I'm going to show you how you can do the actual sunlight simulation next. But first I want to thank the people who make this show possible. 3D Connection. 3D Connection makes the Space Navigator, which is a fantastic way to navigate your model in SketchUp. Way easier to do than using a bunch of keyboard shortcuts and mouse movements and trying to remember all the different tools that you need to use. It's way easier. This is almost like a joystick for SketchUp. Very convenient, very intuitive, very easy, and very accurate as well. But this is what's so cool. As long as we're talking about Google Earth in this episode, I should point out the, the Space Navigator also works in other 3D applications, not just SketchUp. And, th and Google Earth is one of those applications. So even in Google Earth, plug and play with the Space Navigator and you can actually navigate through Google Earth. And I, I, this is actually New York City right here. You can see as I navigate down how the entire city practically has been modeled in 3D with photoreal buildings. It's quite impressive. And to fly through using the Space Navigator, it's almost like having your own personal helicopter tour of New York City. This is a really great use of the Space Navigator. And it really kind of shows off its power. Uh, and particularly because Google Earth, I mean, by default, Google Earth's navigation tools aren't really all that easy. Uh, SketchUp's navigation tools that are built in are a little bit better. Google Earth isn't really designed for this kind of thing by default. But with the Space Navigator, you can see you can just fly through the city so easily and find the specific place you're looking for. Just, it's really quite un unbelievable. Definitely check out their website, which is www.3dconnection.com, and check out the list of the other 3D applications that they work with. I think you'll be pretty surprised at how many they work with, not just SketchUp and Google Earth, but even all the way up to the really professional tools like Maya or Cinema 4D or a bunch of these other really, really advanced programs. Definitely check them out, and I want to thank them so much for sponsoring this episode of SketchUp, a 3D toolbox. Now back to our model here. We've done all the hard work, right? We've got our geolocation for our model, so that's fantastic. Now we're ready to start doing the sunlight simulation. And to do that, we're actually going to uh, be opening up a new portion of SketchUp that we haven't used before. Uh, you'll notice if you go up to the, tool, to the menu bar up here and you choose Window, you have all these things down here that we haven't really talked about before. Things like, uh, you know, materials and components and layers and scenes and all this stuff. We're going to talk about all this stuff eventually. For now though, we're only going to use shadows. Now shadows is basically the same thing as a sunlight simulation. I call it sunlight simulator because that's really what it is. But if you click on shadows, it opens up this little extra window over here that uh, is completely separate from SketchUp. It's kind of like another tool palette. Now these windows, are, I call them inspectors. Uh, I think you can also call them palettes, um, but call them whatever you like. They're separate windows and there are s several uh, different ones of these. This is the shadow settings one, as you can see right up there. And uh, you can move this around, position it wherever you want. If you want to get it out of the way, click on the little bar at the top and it minimizes itself. Click on it again, pops back open. And this is where all the settings for your sunlight simulation uh, are located. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to check the box that says display shadows. And when you do that, you can see 
at this angle you can't really see what's going on, but let me rotate around the model a little bit. You can see that by checking that box, we now have shadows. So our model is actually casting shadows on itself and the surrounding area. So this is really, really cool. Now, these shadows, you'll notice when I move, the shadows go away. Now, this is one thing to point out. Calculating all these shadows is a pretty, you know, it taxes your computer quite a bit. You don't generally want to have this checked if you're still working on your model. Check it, uh, you know, check the box to kind of see what's going on, but it, it really, particularly if you have a slightly lower end computer, it will really put a lot of strain on your computer and uh, it'll cause your modeling to slow down quite a bit. So uncheck it when you're just kind of like still modeling stuff, you're tweaking things, but then when you want to see what's going on with the shadows, check the box and it'll take a couple seconds and then it'll calculate it. And if you navigate, the shadows will deactivate automatically just because it can't calculate the different angles of the shadows that quickly. But then you just let it sit for a second, they pop back up. So that's very cool. Now, you'll recall that I mentioned at the beginning of the episode that for shadows to simulate properly, we need to know what time and what date these shadows are taking place on. And you can see that up in our shadow settings, we have sliders for just that. We have a time slider and a date slider. And I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see the big difference the time and date make. So I'll start with the time slider. At this point, you can see it's set to 1.30 p.m. That's what this little text box here says. But if I start sliding it around, again, it does kind of dumb down your model. You can see that as I'm changing this slider, the shadows are updating, but it's not displaying textures. It's kind of bringing your model down into a very simple, just basic colored in model. It's not permanent. Once you let go of the slider, it recalculates everything and it pops back into its uh, photorealistic version. But you can see that just by adjusting the time, for example, here is uh, uh, about half past two in the afternoon. And here's uh, about nine in the morning. And this is specific to San Francisco. If this was a different location, you would have a very different shadow. And uh, now the date. I'm going to leave this set to, I'll go back to maybe one. I can just type in one, or whoops, 1 p.m. And it switches it to 1 p.m. So you can type in a specific time if you want. And uh, I'm going to drag the date slider. So this is uh, this is uh, early November right now, uh, November 3rd specifically. But you can see if I jump to maybe sometime in March, beginning of March, you can see the shadow changes depending on the time of year. Not as dramatic as the time of day, but the time of year does make a big difference. Like let's try going for uh, 07 slash 23. And you can see the shadows again change. Well, I hope you found this episode of SketchUp a 3D Toolbox useful. Sunlight Simulation is a really interesting tool and it can be fun just to kind of play around with and see what your model is going to look like in the real world once it's actually built. Now, until next time, be sure to visit our website at www.harwoodpodcast.com. I'll have the show notes for this episode where you can download the lesson file that I was working with in this episode and try it out for yourself. I'll also have a link to where you can download Google Earth for yourself and uh, you can uh, toy around with that and use it to get the location data for your model. And if you have any questions or comments for me about the show, send me an email at Cameron at HarwoodPodcast.com. I would love to hear from you guys. Until next time, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling.